Bam, we're live. A little late action today. The uh, no morning show. Uh, we just had a two o'clock and then we have a four o'clock. But we're, we're live with another amazing wrestler and wrestling podcast in our country. Uh, so we've got Mr. Emmett Sherlock. He's the co-host and co-founder of the Wrestling Podcast. He's a four-time Georgia State champ, two-time 32 finalist, uh, multiple-time Tulsa All-American. In his weight, he's ranked seven in the country, and uh, he can also interview. So pretty good stuff. We got him live today. It's the Wrestling Podcast. Uh, they started in May, and they're here with us. And they just got off the phone with a stud. So what's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm excited to talk to you, and I don't know. I'm excited. Man, it's cool. It's great to see uh, all these young men, young women coming up with these things. I had uh, I had um, HMA on, which are young dudes. Yeah, I know. How old are you? I am uh, 13. 13, so I think he was 14. Yeah, so about the same age, so basically. Yeah, so maybe yeah. you guys will run into each other on the mat, huh? Uh, maybe I, I think we wrestled actually one time. Maybe we were in like eight, but we <laughs> yeah. have, he, he's like right now he's a little he's like five pounds smaller than me. You know, even though I'm one year older, but he's a little he's a little five like five pounds smaller. Nice. So maybe you're just gonna call him out, right? Yeah. Hey, Sam, calling you out. <laughs> yeah, we'll do a. You guys should do like a, a wrestling, uh, like a, a a wrestling match live. The TWP versus the HMA. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is, is your co-host a wrestler also? Yeah, he's a wrestler, too. Nice. nice. So, we got, yeah, we, we got to we gotta, we gotta, we gotta hit Flow Wrestling up. Yeah, that's uh, the two two young podcasters. Yeah, yeah. TWP versus uh, HMA. HMA. That, that'd be pretty awesome. Hey, man, yeah. so first of all, man, thanks so much for coming on. I was honored when you reached out to me. Um, it's always an honor to have uh, have anybody on my show. So. I really do. I'm thankful. I appreciate it. Uh, and it's been fun. But first yeah. of all, I mean, how has your summer gone with all this, uh, all this pandemic? So let's see. Um, I don't know. So we got our state tournament done, and that was so. Luckily, we got to do our state tournament for before COVID. You know, had to shut shut down with the restrictions and stuff. But I don't know. I had to do so. First things, all practices were closing down and. You know, everybody, school, and then eventually school started. So our school actually ended a little later than, I mean, it stopped a little later because I got a private school and it's a little less kids. So we got to go on for a little bit longer. Eventually that closed down, then can't go to restaurants. You can't even go get a crab cake or something you want to go get, you know, without maybe eating it on your back porch or something. For sure. Yeah. yeah so that that happened. And then let's see. And then how, how did it affect your, uh, practice normal summer wrestling so summer i know it affected so what we did i have a mat in my, i have a 10 by 10 mat in my basement and what we did was our coach had um we did virtual coaching literally so first i went uh, this thing called facebook i don't know if you saw like facebook wrestling it started like last like during quarantine and they would have one every they day were a, they were doing a, like virtual clinics every day. yeah and they would do it every day. So I would hop on and I would do those all the time. I would do them every single day. And then eventually I would, then my coach started doing them every Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, you know, maybe one day break. And then I would, during school, I would, I would make a 9 a.m. to like a 10 a.m. Um, wrestling. And then, so I would go wake up, do my first first um, assignment, get my Zoom call. We had Zoom calls like 8 a.m for school and then I'll do that then go to practice and then do my rest of my school but yeah that would be my that would be my practice for the the week which is all virtual stuff so now um has uh so where are you now in Maryland I'm in Maryland now yes so have they started to um to gradually open back up yeah 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 you know? I we can go like there's no like still not a lot of dine-in places but in the wrestling's actually it was kind of weird so my normal coach um, you know, I practiced this week, so I went to somewhere else, and they made us wrestle with masks on. <laughs> yeah, How it was a little, was that? it wasn't fun because I was sweating so much just on the mask. <laughs> and, it, and I wear, I, I, it was my first time there, 
so I didn't know what to expect. So I wear the regular mask that goes behind your ear, you know, the strings. And every time someone clubs me, you know, it falls <laughs> off. But luckily, the people, I, if I go there again next time, the people that are that been there, you know, they wear, like, the gator mask where it goes around your neck and then you pull it. You know what oh, I mean? Right. Yeah. So yeah, those, might... yeah, those ones work a lot more, a lot better than for wrestling than the string because it would still stay on. For sure, but, man. So, man, tell us about the wrestling podcast, man. What made you, uh, what okay. made you start it? Uh, you know, why'd you start it? What, what are you and your your co-hosts doing? What are your goals? I know you've been interviewing people, and uh, I love it. Yeah, thank you. Um, so let's get. So maybe about a year ago, um, HMA started right. And or something like that, maybe a year, half ago, something. But they started, and I knew Sam because I knew he was a good, he's a good wrestler himself, so I knew him. And I saw he started a podcast, and you know, six months down, like eight months, I, I, I know I keep watching them. I know in the back of my head, ah, oh, podcast, you know, quarantine starts, podcast pops up in my head, you know. <laughs> oh, I, I want to start one. I'm like, who? And so. Some people, you know, I don't want to start that, you know, you know, some people, it's, it's a big commitment to start one. So like, nah, that's too much work, you know? And then eventually I was playing Fortnite with my co-host, another host, um, Will. And I'm like, Will, he's a wrestler himself. I'm like, Will, you want to start a wrestling podcast? It was like 12 at 12 in the morning. I'm at 12. Yeah. Yeah. 12, no, 12 at night. Um, and I'm like, yeah, you want to start? He's like, yeah. I was like, so I, I stay up. I make her a logo. I, um, what else? I see how do I, how am I going to put my, my stuff out? I'm like, so we tried Google meets first. My like, Google meets is not the best. You know, they're like zoom. I'm like, I'm like, no, we're not going to do zoom. We don't have like a pro account. So, or something like that. And then Will's mom's like, Oh, my mom has one. I'm like, awesome. So we use her account. And, um, and then I was like, how am I going to put out that? I found anchor what I heard you use too. Right. Yes, sir. And, then, and then I used Anchor to put out all my audio stuff. And then I record my Zoom calls. And then I just put that out on YouTube. And then I got a logo. Then at first, if I do my friend Latrell, it's, it was very, very not good. Maybe like, <laughs> I don't know, maybe like 12 minutes or something for can the interview. You, uh, can you see the comments that are coming down on the? No, I can't. What are they saying? Uh, Coach uh, Chuck Morris is hitting you uh, up. And he's like, Emmett Sherlock. No Smith. I uh, oh yeah, Emma Smith. Uh, Coach Charlie, what's up? How are you, Coach Charlie? That's I went to him a lot in Georgia when I lived there. So uh, yeah, he said he's also part of my MF family. Yeah. <laughs> hey, if Coach Charlie's watching, he's gonna get on the podcast too. I gotta find, figure out a date. Yeah, man, you got well. You know him up close and personal. I've only yeah. had the pleasure to meet him on my podcast, but. I can't wait to meet him in person because oh, yeah. just by talking to him over the podcast, I wanted to, I wanted to do, I mean, I don't think I've ran in 20 years, but I wanted to run around my room like 40 times after I got off the phone. Yeah. With him. I'm ready to be an athlete again. I just talked to Chuck Morris. And, yeah. And Coach Charlie is awesome. He's ready to go. <laughs> yeah, man. He's pumped up. So yeah, man. Sorry about that. He was, he was shouting you out. So, so you did, you tried your first podcast and it was how long? 12 minutes. <laughs> so you to figure out what to talk about? Yeah, so like, and then, so at first we're like, oh, we're gonna ask everybody the same, we did made 15 questions. Favorite brand, favorite wrestling shoe, favorite, we're gonna ask everybody these. And now I watch, I'm like, this is not that fun to watch. I'm like, I don't wanna watch this. And then, I, next still we do um, another person, one of, and it made me got, maybe did one actual question that we didn't ask everybody. Maybe we did one new question or something. And still the interview was, episode two was still not that good. Maybe, maybe it lasts five minutes longer or something. Still wasn't that good. And then eventually our third episode, all right? Yeah, third episode, we, so when I first started, I DM'd like 50, 50 wrestlers, right? I knew. One answered. It was Anthony Etchamendia. And Anthony's, He's he's like I don't think if I didn't get anyone big I don't know if I would still be doing it. Anthony was he, he Anthony is one of our you know guys that maybe probably made me stick with this thing, you know. But so I interviewed good Anthony and then he and the week before that he um, put out a documentary on Flow the Crossing. It was a whole thing about him moving from Cuba to 
And I, we did probably so much research. Me, all the people that are on our podcast, we sat on a Zoom call for like two hours together watching the documentary and doing questions. And we were like, we we're so focused. And, and it was just, it was pretty good. It was actually, I liked the interview. It was pretty good. It was like around 40 minutes long. It was pretty good. And after that, I just wanted to keep sticking with it and still doing them today. Yeah, he's not uh... – Anthony's not in that good of shape, is he? No, Anthony's in wonderful shape. <laughs> Anthony it looks, like, is, it looks like he was cut out of a rock wall, right? Yeah, Anthony is um a little he is some type of freak nature. I don't know what to call him. He is yeah, um my son my son uh, watched his story and then says, Okay, that's it. When I have kids, I'm starting them in gymnastics before I put them in wrestling. Yeah, we asked, and we talked about that all and stuff in our podcast. We talked about why do you, do you think gymnastics something talks about why because it gives you the control of your body, stuff like that, and balance. And... Yeah, and his mom was an Olympic gymnast. Yeah, yeah, and then his dad. His old dad. His dad is. His dad's jacked, right? I just saw a photo of him uh, the other day, but. That's that. That's that arroz con pollo. That that was rice and beans. They feed yeah. Him in Cuba. <laughs> yeah. I like it, man. I like it. Yeah, he was. Uh, he's a good dude, man. Uh, God bless him, man. His story is. I grew up in Miami. Uh, mm -hmm. so growing up in South Florida, I met a lot of um, people and people's friends of mine who had family that kind of uh, journeyed the same way. So uh, to hear his story is just amazing. I mean, I could tell you stories sitting with my friends in the backyard yeah. of apartments uh, of our apartment complex and some dude walks through the lobby and it's my buddy starts crying. We're in high school. I'm like, what the hell's going on? And the guy just landed on Miami Beach on a, a raft made with plywood and uh, and they used to use like uh, motorcycle engines or whatever. And yeah. they come over and um, it was crazy to see that kind of. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, imagine wanting to be free so bad that you would put yourself through. Yeah. They put themselves through. So uh, yeah. man, God bless him. And I, I'm excited to, to watch him wrestle and see, see how he does at the next level. And uh, yeah. uh, I think. I think didn't you, have you got to talk? Didn't you get to talk to him? Uh, yeah. I talked to him probably around the same time. Yeah. I think I saw him around like the same time you did. Cause uh, it was about a week after, I don't know, I, I watched that show and then I saw him pop up on my Instagram or something. So I hit him up and uh, yeah, he was like, let's do it. And then, but he was right in the middle of practice. So he had just got done with practice. So it was pretty quick. I think it was like 20 minutes, maybe 25 minutes, but um, he was just kind of in the middle of doing yeah. something. But his, his English is really good now. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's, uh, I don't know that I would ever go and visit his apartment because I'm deathly afraid of snakes. Oh yeah. What is All I snake? ever see him doing is playing with snakes. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to talk to that dude from the street and I'll just be like, yo, yeah, you're good. Talk like this. Cause one thing that, uh, that I don't do is snakes. I I'll snake. walk outside. I live uh, where my house is. It's uh, all woods behind me. And sometimes I'll be walking around the, the house and then there's a black racer and I'm like, uh, you know, oh yeah, I feel you. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I don't know. I mean, you're probably not. Are you familiar with Tom and Jerry? Does that cartoon? Yeah, I know Tom and Jerry. That? Okay, yeah. so Tom and Jerry used to have a mom that would jump up on the thing like, ah! Yeah. I think it was snakes. <laughs> yeah, I so. I am like. One time I almost ran a snake with my bike. I'm running. I, I ride my bike all the way down the hill. I am not messing with snakes. <laughs> yeah, I'm out. So, um, so man, you started. That's awesome. So, how did you and uh, uh, who, what's your partner's name? So, Will. Will Hudson's his name. So, Will Hudson. So, how did you and, for example, yeah. like when you talked to Sam, it, it just happened. Like they were just kind of yeah. back and forth. Is this yes. a kid that is? It was already a buddy of yours to begin with, and you were just so, like, let's do it. So, um, how? So, um, he's a wrestler, and we're both in Maryland. So. I knew him from, so I didn't know him because I didn't go to his club. And 
So I know there's one of my friends named John, and he also started with the podcast and whatever, but he ended up he did not like he didn't like doing research and stuff, so he ended up not doing it. Yeah. So so um John, I mean I know John from because he's a state champ and I'm state champ and I know him and all that. Yeah, if you're a good wrestler, you're gonna know other good wrestlers, you know what I mean? And John John knows Will because I, I FaceTime, you know, I play Fortnite with John and I'm playing Fortnite with Will too, you know. And so then I go to a Warhawks practice with Sim Club with the other kids at. I go and I meet him there and he seemed pretty cool. And then we keep playing Fortnite together and playing games. And somehow out of nowhere, I asked it, all three of them to be on the podcast. And yeah, he says yes. And then John and then John eventually backed out because he didn't, you know, it's, it's a big commitment to run a podcast. Listen, I feel you. And I, I cause, um, First of all, you guys are wrestlers, so you know yeah. wrestling where I had no clue what I mean, I the reason I started is because you know, you've heard the story, my son, whatever, right? But yeah, but I was never I'm not an experienced wrestler. I didn't yeah. know stuff. So when I first started, it was just like, hey, I just want to know why you wrestle and why it's so important and why it's why people say it's life and not just a sport. And that's kind of what I was going with, which because that's my purpose. And now that I've learned how to like I've adjusted different things. I, I started to research and, I, and yeah, it's no joke. Cause uh, I know sometimes early on my, my wife and kids would ask me, Hey, can you do something in the morning for us? I'm like, man, I got a show. They're like, yeah, not until 11. I'm like, you understand. I got to do research. And yeah. I, you've like, been... the hell you got to research from I'm like, okay, come up and do it for me. It takes me about, I don't know around 30 at 30 minutes to an hour that like an hour sometimes like sometimes even more you know if the person doesn't have a lot of stuff like not a popular wrestler you know you gotta it takes time to figure out what questions you're gonna ask him you gotta design a post about him what caption you're gonna say um <laughs> there's so much stuff you need to do yeah and so um i don't know you saw did you signed up for my show so you saw my yeah. family right mm, you um, yeah I would recommend doing that for everyone because what happened was I knew about Calendly because I was in auto sales for 20 years. Yeah. I've been doing real estate. And so I knew about Calendly and I set it up to do my appointments. Right. Mm -hmm. But then I would get people to come on the show just like you are. And it would just be like Joe Schmo wrestler. And I'd be like, okay, I got to look this up. Right. To figure it out. Right. Um, so if you see where I added, like, give me. Yeah. Uh, can you give me a little bit, a little bio on yourself, which at least you got a head start, right? So that's mm. kind of really helped because I, how am I going to find out that Emmett Sherlock was a four time joke? Like, if you don't tell yeah. me that, I'm not going to go look, you know, it's hard to find stuff like that. So whatever, that's, that's helped me kickstart it and uh, yeah. kind of where we are now, but man, that's really, that's really cool. Like you just, do you do, um, so <laughs> Fortnite, man, all the kids are into that. I got, I got two T well, One's a preteen. He's going to be 12 in September. And then, of course, the other one's going to be 15 in September. They're one week apart as far as birthdays. Okay. Um, but, man, so you're wrestling. I know that uh, uh, you're doing pretty good, ranked seventh in the country right now at your weight class. Uh, what uh, what got you into wrestling? How did you start? Um, it's kind of weird. So nobody in my family wrestled. Not my dad, not my grandpa, not my – my great grandpa, not my aunts, not my uncles, none of them wrestled. So I was a crazy kid when I was younger and we played football and sometimes, you know, playing football, you got Tyson has to do, um, my brother, I have a brother, he has to do 10 U and then I have to do eight U, you know? And so like you had to take him to two different practices and stuff like that. So it's kind of hard, you know, as a parent, like go drive your kid to the six you practice and then drive your one kid to the seven you you know what I mean and so we're trying to find a sport that oh what can we do together that is only at one place and we we're just looking and then we're at, one time at Halloween right we go trick-or-treating and then somehow we get a conversation with this old lady and then he gives somehow we talk about sports and asking how we're doing and what sport like something you know and somehow she brings up wrestling and and her I don't know I don't know how they're related, but cousin or brother or something, something. She knows a guy who um, is a wrestling and she does like, he does private and private coaching and his name's Kellen. And 
Kellen. So I go to Kellen, and it was one. On, it was like he's the only coach, and we're the only two kids, and he teaches us how to wrestle. And so I go to another practice, like a main, like uh, what thirty kids or something like that. But the person who really made me good was him, and so he taught me all the things. Because you know, at a practice, you're it's you, the coach got to worry about thirty people, but when you're at this one coach, and then worrying just about you and your brother, trying to get you to actually know the basics, and so. I still talk to him to this day. He calls me like like at least three times a month, and we still talk. And sometimes he flies out when I go to Tulsa, in Oklahoma, he'll fly out and come coach me. And he's been awesome. Um, he's he taught me everything like my first three and a half years of wrestling, um, and that made me. That's like the first three and a half years of wrestling were probably your most important because that's your fundamental. Because if you learn bad stuff your first three and a half of wrestling, you're gonna have bad habits the rest of your career, you know? It's hard to break bad habits. Absolutely. So. I agree with you, too, as far as the training. I think I've learned in the last couple of years, um, this past season, I would he would go to club practice, and then he would go to high school practice. But then I would still, like, once a week, I would get him into a private just to – Yeah. It's really good refresher, one-on-one. Um, yeah. Even uh, my, my younger one plays tennis. And uh, even that, he'll go to his tennis lessons, or he'll go to his his tennis thing every day at for two hours or whatever it is. But then, once a week or every other week, I'll do like a one on one for him, so that the coach can get more uh, a little advanced, kind of refresh stuff. More. Yeah, focused. it's all. Yeah, it's always good to have that one guy, and also you can build relationships with that one coach. Where it's kind of hard to build, a, and you can build a relationship, but it isn't going to be like a close, super, you know, personal with a coach that has to worry about 50 other kids then. But if you have one coach that's just coaching you or maybe two other people he's privating, it's a lot easier to, they take time. They, they show you, they, 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 they show you the move. They show you a video of someone hitting that move. They, you know, they just do a lot more than it's kind of, you know what I mean? It's just a lot easier for them to, focus on one person so who's your um, who's your favorite wrestler out there right now right now let's see I don't know I'm let's see my when so Nashawn Garrett from Cornell um when he wrestled there was my first favorite wrestler because I was like when I first started wrestling he was the national champion at that time you know he's the guy I saw but like he's still one of my favorites still because he's the guy who was my favorite when I first started wrestling but Right now, I'm, I'm liking I, – I, I don't know. There's a lot of good people out there. Like, now David Carr is my favorite. After I talked to him, and <laughs> he's so nice, and now he's my favorite, you know? But once I talk to somebody else, and they're going to be my favorite, you know? It's just there's so uh, many p- good you know, wrestlers. For me, I'm not even a kid. I'm 44, and every time I have a new person on, I'm like, okay, I got a new favorite person now. Exactly. That's how <laughs> my – so that's how our other host, Will, is. So we get – Kyvin Gatson. Oh, Kyvin is my favorite. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do when I see the two kids wrestle each other this year, especially here in Florida, because I've done a lot for, you know, Florida yeah. wrestling. And um, I'm going to see two kids at, like, States or something be like, I don't know who I want to win. I like them both, right? <laughs> I had them both Yeah. On. So uh, I, I saw you. So what do you do? You usually give yourself a crew cut for the season and then grow your hair out when you off season? No, so the thing is, this was, I've always had buzz cuts <laughs> till I was 11, 12, right? And cause my dad's in the Navy and his hair is short, like oh, it's yeah. only that tall. And so it's always been like thing, like Tice, my brother's hair is still short. Like it's just been a thing that I just, it's just a thing, you know, if your dad's hair is short, you want your hair short, you know? No, Eventually, I understand my 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 dad is going bald, so I think I'm going bald now too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I now I just have my hair long. It's like look, it's like look, it's to my um, nose. <laughs> I like. Good, so who, what's I the? Uh, uh, is there an interview? You've you've done about 28 interviews so far. I know we talked off the air a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is, is there an interview out there that you really want that you haven't been able to get yet? So yeah, um, I would, um, who, so yeah, um, I was talking to David about this earlier. He was asking me the same question and he said, ah, I'm gonna hook you up with this guy. So like, <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's, um, let's see. I was, let's see. Nashawn Garrett would be awesome since he was my first favorite wrestler ever. And 
Uh, you know, his, his assistant coach, the assistant coach, Gabe Dean. Mm -hmm. The thing does. is, you know, it's funny. He, he, I made a, uh, I made, he, he like liked one of my photos and like he commented the, on one of them. Yeah. Gabe Dean will come on. He came on my show early on. I didn't really? know how I was doing then. So I'd love to get him back on because I got questions now, but, um, but he came on. You could message him on Instagram. Yeah. Too. And I think I can because Gabe, Gabe like liked one. Cause I made a comment. So it was, I think it was for a uh, date, right? on Flow Wrestling Post and you know they can gave Dean or they're both at Cornell. So I make a po I make a comment I'm like uh well well can't Chimizo scramble out of that, right? And then gave Dean replies, No he cannot <laughs> and then he likes my comment. <laughs> All right, so so interviews you wanna have. Nashawn Garrett. Anybody Nashawn Garrett. Nashawn Anybody Garrett. Anybody out there listening, he wants Nashawn Garrett. Yeah, Nashawn Garrett. That's that's the guy. That's the guy. That's the one guy you want. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, I haven't had him on, or else I would I would sh I would try to call him for you. But as somebody out there listening that knows Nashawn Garrett, man, let's get him on the TWP show. That was sure. Um, have you had NATO? Yes, NATO. I had NATO. He's actually my probably my. Um, let's like I don't know if he was my second or let's see. I'll tell you right now. I have my so it oh. was. Is it he was, awesome? Yeah, NATO was pretty cool. He was probably, he was probably, so I had a couple college guys that I knew, so I got from, like, I knew them, like, in Georgia, one of them, like, I got Jackson, just, oh, you know, I'm Desaria, because you did a thing with him. I got Desaria because he was from Georgia, and I knew him, we went to the same place, so I got him, and then, other than that, Anthony, he was very, like, my, probably one of my first big guys, too. Yeah, NATO's like, awesome, man. What about yeah, uh, Jack Mueller? No, I haven't, but I think, I, I think, he, I, he's, I think I can because I know Sam real well and there he's on the part of the show. Yeah. I, I haven't got him yet, but I, I think I, I, I've, I've listened to him a bunch. Talk on like, I watch all the H HMA shows still. And so, what so about ladies, is there a lady out there you'd like to get on? Yeah. Um, I think, um, yeah, I was talking about same. I don't know why me, me, me and Dave had similar conversations. Cause he was like, Cause he was giving us ideas like which way I can grow, like talking about woman wrestling. I was like, I, I brought that up. I was like, I said we need to bring some women's on, and he says, well, who would you want? I'm like, I think I would want to have probably um, Helen Marillis because she's from I think I think it wasn't her. I think she's from Maryland. So oh, really? Yeah. Yes, I think. I think I just watched her show. Um, you know who's really cool is Catherine Shea. I had on yesterday. Yeah. She cool? Julia yeah. I want, talk to, I want to talk to any any girls. I just want to – I've been trying to talk to any, so – And keep going. Uh, I yeah, so I mean, you can look, I started, a, I started a, a playlist on my on my YouTube that says Women on the Mat. Mm -hmm. You can go through that and take a look and see what's there. And if I could help you get any of them, I'd be happy to. Or you yeah. Can you can go through my whole playlist. I think there's 283 of them right now on YouTube because I – I put them at the end of the week is when I put them to YouTube and, and podcast. So, I mean, you're welcome to go through there and see if there's anyone and yeah. uh, I can try and help. Uh, yeah. There are some people like, like you're trying to get Spencer Lee. I just got lucky because I had Jody Strip Matter on and, oh, okay. uh, and that's his personal coach. So he, uh, he set it up. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, he's very, uh, he's a great guy. Awesome dude. But, yeah, I think um, he's a little like podcast exhaustion or whatever. You yeah, want to yeah, please, sure. that's what he said. To, uh, so David Carr has a they're pretty close because they're yeah. both Iowa Iowa State. You know, he he asked though. He's like, I would, but I'm getting a little exhausted on these podcasts. I'm oh like, yeah, because uh, I I got him early on, but you could tell like, uh, I mean, he had fun. He was awesome. Uh, yeah. So he's a gamer, brother. So you might be able to get him that way. You might be able to find out what games he's playing and yeah. sit on the chair and get him into your like Fortnite or Call of Duty group. Yeah. But he is a gamer because when I talked to him, he was sitting in a gamer chair and he's like, Yeah, you know, just sitting in my gamer chair doing it. he's real chill, but yeah. of course a beast on the mat, right? Yeah. Uh Yanni was cool too. I know he's gonna get you Yanni. That that was pretty cool. Yeah, we're gonna get Yanni. Yanni Yanni and I think we're gonna we're gonna get Gable too, Gable Stevenson. I feel like he's be cool because like have you watched some of his matches? Like you can tell his personality is super cool because like 
Yeah. They cut one time. He was like, "Let him up. I'm gonna take him down." Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Man, so like that's really so awesome. And uh, you know, I mean, being a kid in the sport and doing what you're doing, man, take full advantage of it. You know, you yeah. really get a lot of opportunities and keep doing what you're doing. And it's just, it's awesome. The same thing I told the HMA guys, man. I was just so proud to see kids doing yeah, I know. what you're doing. It's just really, really cool. But yeah. um, I know you said your dad's in the Navy, so you're having to move a lot. Uh, yeah. What does that do for your wrestling? I'm sure you get kind of, you find a coach. It's you kind of tie with the coach. You like what you're doing and then and you've got to go as that. Uh, how does it, how does it affect your wrestling or at this point, have you just kind of adapted? So I think that's probably my last time moving till college. So I have, I, I, so it's like every three to four years I move. So like I've lived in Japan, I've lived in Nebraska, I've lived in Georgia, I've lived in Maryland, I've lived in West Virginia, I let uh, my whole family's from Pittsburgh. So like, like I like, mo- I, I don't like moving because I love staying with, you know, because I build relationships, but like, I actually liked moving, like, I wouldn't want to move now, because I'm sick of it now, but I like moving because <laughs> I, I, I get to meet new people, and it's, for, especially for wrestling, because it helps, like, my coach in Nebraska, so I had a Gre- I had a Greco coach and a freestyle coach, and that's how I'm good at throwing people now. So that's made me better. Then I meet a coach in um, Georgia who's very aggressive. So now I'm aggressive when I can throw people and aggressive. And now my coach in you know you know Maryland can be more tactical and teach. I can still learn tilt. So now I'm aggressive. I can throw people. I can tilt people. I can do all this stuff. So like moving actually has helped you because you get to you know build well, relationships with. Japan must have been cool, huh? Yeah, it was, I was like one to three, I think. So oh. I got, I remembered some. I, I still remember because I was three. I think I, I think you start remembering stuff around, well, for me, where I was like three. So I remember a little bit of the last like maybe five months. I remember like the sushi and stuff. And that's all. <laughs> that's all right, man. So uh, what what's your favorite tournament to compete at? Um, um, Wildwood, New Jersey, probably. That was pretty fun. Wildwood duels up in um. What was that? Wow, wow, in New Jersey. It's like you get that's ten match, you get ten matches, and it was fun for us one year. We, I think, the last few years have been fun. We've stayed at condos, like we haven't stayed at the hotels that are crappy up there, you know, because every I don't know some crappy. Wow, stuff. Is there like a theme park there or something? Wow, well, I don't. Is there a theme park? Just no. Um, I, I, it's just boardwalk and beach. I think I don't know. Oh, that's cool. But like it was fun. We stayed at a condo, and the thing is, you start wrestling until three o'clock, and so the whole thing you get you get time to have fun and the last few times i brought both of my friends with me in the condos so it was cool so i think wildwood and I, I always do pretty good there so it's always my funnest i would say that's awesome man has there been uh is there is there somebody that that has been somebody that you look forward to wrestling like a either a rival or a kid that you're always like man I, that's the guy right I, I he's in my bracket all the time i'm always looking at him uh he's my target uh i don't know seriously i did a bunch of good wrestlers out there there's a bunch of kids that can beat me a bunch of kids i can beat a bunch of kids that we have good matches with um anybody that's in my way you know i gotta beat them so <laughs> that's awesome so uh i know so where do you are you starting ninth grade eighth grade eighth grade eighth grade so my brother's going to ninth grade i'm going to eighth grade okay and uh do you already have like in your mind my favorite college is college. I I want I want to say I yeah I kind of do a little bit. Not like I don't want specific. I have a you know I probably somewhere around Maryland because I don't want to move that far. You know. So I still see the fam. Yeah, and then also my whole family's from Pittsburgh, so it's only four hours. So it's like I like being around. I like Maryland because it's only four hours from my whole family, like my grandparents, my everybody, my aunts, uncles, all live in. Uh, Pittsburgh so I like being around my family so I would want to go like to go to crabs yeah they're pretty good I <laughs> I the first time I read crabs were so like it was so good it was just so good but I want to live somewhere near here I'm thinking maybe like Penn University Penn State Penn State I don't know if I would want to go to Penn State because Penn State you can be really good but you ain't gonna get a starting spot till you're you're a junior you know Penn you should get Penn. Penn's coach on. He's a real nice guy. We we got one Penn, not Penn's coach, Penn RCC coach, Brandon Slay, the Olympic champ. Yeah, so um, 
we got him on. I spoke to the head coach a few times, and uh, he said he was going to reach out to Brandon Slay to, to get him on. Um, yeah, we, we got Slay. Oh, yeah, good cool. Yeah. And he shows his gold medal. He shows his gold medal on the um, podcast. <laughs> How awesome is that? Yeah. yeah uh, Wait, one sec, one sec, one sec. All right, we're good. <laughs> well, that's cool. So you, you get some uh, – I remember when I visited Maryland, there was uh, – it was like this warehouse district or whatever, where they used to have like the GMAC, uh, the General Motors headquarters and stuff. And there was this little crab place and they put newspaper down on the table. They just kind of uh, dump the crabs on the table. Yeah, we go to town. We've done that um, before. Um, we probably had crab like just like that. We put a bunch like probably like we've only been here for years so and maybe like five, six times. It was pretty, like, it's, all, it's been pretty good. It was it was nice. So. One of my friends, my first guy here that like, goes to my school, um, he invited us. He was on the wrestling team for the high school, and he invited us over, and he bought us, like, so much pa- crabs, and we ate we ate it all. But the thing yeah, is, they didn't hurt your fingers. Yeah, I had a crab cake, like, the size of a baseball when I went to oh yeah to the Orioles play one year. We have two crab cake places literally not even a mile from us. Oh, you can just do your run, right? Run yeah, down. go run, run, get a crab cake, run back. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, man. Well, you ready for this? What are, what are we doing? What are we doing? Ten questions. You ready for them? Oh, we do that too on our show. Ten questions. Yeah. Like... I do right, ten questions at the end. Um, Fortnite or Call of Duty? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I guess Fortnite could have started my podcast. <laughs> Uh, single or double? I'm single leg. Te- Actually, no double leg. Cinnamon Toast Crunch or Captain Crunch? Oh, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. <laughs> High That's- speed or hip toss? Um, uh, let's see. High speed hip toss. Let's see. Hip toss. Burgers or wings? Wings. Fireman's carry or ankle pick? Ankle pick. Oreos or Chips Ahoy? Oreos. Cradle or half? Oh, cradle. Cradle, cradle. Gatorade or Powerade? Ooh, that's that's interesting. Um, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, I'm not to go power, Powerade. Not right after you weigh in, right? Yep, Powerade, right after <laughs> you weigh in. All right, leg ride tilts? Or oh, leg ride. Tilts? Leg ride, leg ride. Leg ride. I heard you talking about it earlier, so I was like, all right, I, I hear them now. Uh, yeah, man, those 10 questions are fun. I've been doing them since day one, so. Uh, yeah, we, we started doing, um, we started a whole, like, I don't know, you should probably do it, too. We started, like, uh, we started putting them on our Instagram. We would do it. We would, like, we, we started probably, like, four weeks ago, we started putting them on Instagram. We would do, the guys have 60 seconds to answer it, and um, we have 10 questions, and then we post it on Instagram. Oh, hey, man, keep doing your thing. Keep, yeah. Keep it original. Uh, keep having fun and uh man you're welcome to come on here anytime oh yeah thank you i would love to come on here yeah Shit. i'll have to throw a uh, twp logo up there yeah you got to you got to get you up there is there an hma one up there yeah right, right there. oh i see and i see the same uh is that safe Stanford wrestling yes yeah and then let's see pit y'all look oh and i see morris fitness Yep, he's up there. Yeah, you got, you, got, you got to slap me on there. Yeah, man, for sure. I'll get it. Text yeah, me. That, I have your logo because I put it on that. Yeah. I text you, so. Yeah, man, I got really I got to get you on our podcast, too, one day. One day. Yeah, anytime, man. You just hit me up and tell me. Yeah. And I'm down. Okay. Yeah, well, thank you so time. much. For sure. Keep yeah. doing your thing, man. Keep kicking life's butt. Keep wrestling hard. Keep having a fun podcast. And, uh, man, I love to see young kids doing it big. So keep, keep it up. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, sir.